Hola, welcome to this inaugural panel of OpenScape in which we will be looking at uh, the question of fair leadership and practices regarding that question. Um, I'm going to read something as an introduction so we sort of frame this conversation, which is uh, that the classical pyramidal hierarchy organized around a single person has been the default model but has been criticized again and again in recent years, mostly because of abuse of power and toxic dynamics in the workspace. It ran out of steam, it stopped bringing innovation, and it crystallized values that are no longer relevant or acceptable today. So we are witnessing new models of leadership, uh, which emphasize experimental approaches to leadership, uh, and also horizontality, collaboration, uh, fairness, and collective work. So for the context of this panel, we're going to interview three people. We're going to have to talk with three uh, cultural managers who are establishing new ways of leadership in their own context. So first of all, this panel you're watching was pre-recorded and will be followed by a public Q&A session with the three panelists after you watch this video. Uh, I'm gonna make a quick introduction of the three of them, but if you're interested uh, in knowing more about their work, I really um, encourage you to watch their own presentations, which are longer, and in which they explain in further detail the way they approach their work and the kind of work that their institutions do. So first we have Arundhati Ghosh from India, we have Dulia Churilova from Russia, and we have Fernando Garcia Barros from Bolivia. Um, so first to present Arundhati, Arundhati Ghosh is the Executive Director of India Foundation for the Arts, IFA, an independent nationwide non for profit organization that makes grants and implements projects across research, practice, and education in the arts and culture across India since 1995. Um, then we have Julia Chulilova. Uh, after 10 years working as an independent producer and curator, Julia was asked to lead the prime theater of Novo Sibrisk in Siberia. And in an artistic landscape where independent performing arts practitioners do not really exist. Julia tried to bring those values in that house, in that space, in that venue, pushing forward financial transparency and salarial equity, amongst other things. Most of the non-artistic staff in the place left in the space of this new style of leadership, but she quickly reassembled a new team for the theater. And in March 22, after she expressed her shock and disapproval of the current war we're witnessing, Julia was fired from her position. However, the theater team has asked her to continue helming the institution, which she does now openly and voluntarily. Finally, our last guest is Fernando Garcia Barrios. Garcia Barrios, sorry, he's the director of Martadero, a big cultural and social center in the city of Cochabamba in Bolivia. More than a venue for the arts, Martadero is has become a laboratory for social innovation through community action catalyzing the citizens' question, issues, ideas, and solutions, Martadero fosters transversal approaches to improve the reality of the region. For instance, the hybridization of the language through the spreading of the use of particles such as co, multi, poly, inter, hyper, and trans has already radically changed the production and transmission of content and the processing of sustainable strategies for the future. As I said before, because this meeting was pre-recorded, you can actually watch those presentations they made so you can have a wider uh, idea and notion of how they approach this concept that I'm just reading in general. So now let's go for the conversation. Um, I'm interested in how do we create those more horizontal models or more the, those more collective models uh, in your experience? How, how can we achieve that? Because I think what Fernando says also, it's about experimenting and trying to change our sort of inner structure to then change bigger structures. So how do we do that? What values are in play? What uh, dynamics we can change? What dynamics we can maintain? Uh, also thinking about what Arundhati says, that we have to like reach, uh, we, we don't have to take what we've learned, but also we have to like sort of disregard that and create new ways. So. How can we create those ways? How, what, what's been useful for us or for you? After listening to both Yulia and Fernando, and I'm thinking through this, is um, 
there are two things that strike me. One is not just a model of a more collective leadership, but also who are the voices in that leadership. So for us in India, at least, diversity is very important. Because if the same, you know, 10 white old men make decisions, then it is equal to that one white old man making decision. So basically, if you're going to have a collective spirit, it's also important to understand who those voices are in that spirit. So for us in India, it's right now, it's very important to be, to kind of invite those different voices across for us, religion, caste, gender, sexual orientation, ability, disability, uh, as well as multiple languages, regions, you know how huge India is. We have thousands of languages and various regions within the, uh, within the country. And also so that people are able to speak from their positions of marginality and that it gets louder. So for me, that's important. And the second thing is while we are making these models of uh, distributing power and distributing accountability and responsibility to make it also parallelly known to the world. You can't just do it within your organizations because who's going to hold you responsible then? Who's going to ask you questions? So the moment you announce it, that this is how we are doing, you have an additional responsibility now because the world can challenge you. The community that you serve can challenge you. So for us as funders and project implementers in the arts, if we announce that uh, this is how we make decisions, it's not just me, the executive director saying, these are the five projects we are going to choose, but there's an internal team that has a collective decision-making, then there's an external panel that makes, so it's the collective that is taking a call on what needs support in the arts. Then tomorrow, if somebody agrees or disagrees, they can challenge us publicly. And these conversations have to happen publicly. Uh, I think transparency there is another critical uh, sort of you know, ingredient in making these power structures uh, break down what is there and create more flatter, broader and collective spaces for ourselves. In our case, um, how are we going to do that? Uh, it's very connected with the change of language because the change of language is making a change of the mind no? and is uh, putting us in another place. No? In that case, uh, we, we are recovering the idea of spaces. To create spaces means a lot of things. No? In, the, in the line that uh, Arundhati was telling, no? those spaces, uh, has, they have to be inter. They have to be inter, uh, they can be interconnecting in interaction, intersectional uh, of interbeing no? as persons, no? being uh, in a way of interbeing, but as well multi, multi pertenescent, multi vocalic, co, co creating, co managing, and trans as well, trans, in that context of trans modernity, transpersonal then it's not only a, a game of words, it's a, really a moment of changing the, the, the words we use to, to work. That helps us a lot no? for changing the old models, no, no more mm -hmm. uh, mono <laughs> in that sense. Do you think that in order to change leadership, you have to be in a position of leadership? Or can you change uh, leadership from the outside? Do you have to be in a position of leadership to change that model or, or can you approach it from another perspective? What do you guys think? Do you I think it's a bit of both. Uh, you need both actually. You can't do just one or the other. You yeah. need to be inside of power structures to be able to start cracking it from inside and therefore be in places of position, power, et cetera. And that's why, again, in India, we see a lot of, the people, the communities that were marginalized for the longest time are wanting political power, are wanting economic power, are wanting social power and creating their own, you know, sort of structures. But also on the other side, you have to create pressure from outside. It's like a dam, you know, if you want to break a dam on a river, then you put pressure from inside, but you also <laughs> keep hitting from outside. I, I don't think one or the other is an answer. Yeah. It's a combination. We have to work in like uh, 
the, the revolution has to happen together from inside and outside, I feel. Of course. And in that sense, I'm interested because the three of you represent both uh, um, independent and sort of state projects. We're not just independent or just public. So we have those two spheres. Uh, so how do we also navigate and how do we dialogue with like power structures, like, I don't know, public structures, uh, government, uh, but also independent, like, how can we create that connection so both sides can complement each other instead of compete? Well, in, in our case, uh, I could say that we are continuously, by our way of doing the things, we are questioning the, that kind of old power no, that we yeah. suffer um, so often, no? uh, a kind of hierarchic and um, old and obsolete way of, of thinking and of uh, executing the power. No? Uh, in our idea, it's important to be connected with power, but the power is changing a lot. No? Uh, uh, during the last 30 years, 40 years, really the question is uh, how we structure the power now, no? Because people has power, uh, the spaces that we are leading uh, have power, the, the ideas have power, and then not only the political power is uh, the one controlling no? the, the society. And in that, in that sense, I think it's very important to understand the power in a more open way no? than before. Uh, because it's another thing to to uh, surpass. Very very important. Uh, uh, our our ways of doing are questioning the the obsolete way of having power, no? and and creating new spaces of power, no? of decision. We have noticed a lot because the uh, different collectives they were having every time more empowerment. And pushing uh, some laws, no, and asking for some uh, answers to their needs, and then uh, we are uh, trusting in in that uh, way of new powers, no. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Yulia uh, Horatio uh, related to your question. May I may I ask her? Yeah. Of course. So, yeah, I Yulia, I was wondering. You know, you said right now they haven't put a new director, right? The state hasn't put anyone in your place, so to say. So if they do hire someone and somebody comes, what happens then? Because I think that's also connected to Horatio's question of what is the negotiation then? Because obviously your team uh, believes in you as the leader. They don't care whether you are sanctioned officially or not. Uh, and today, without any salary, without any official position, you are running the place. But tomorrow, if the state sends someone down, how is the, I want to make a play with that conversation that Yulia will have with that person. It's, I'm really intrigued by it. Thanks a lot, uh, Arundhati, for the question. Мы не знаем, что будет завтра, что будет через месяц. Я думаю, что, конечно, Диалог, как всегда, в деталях, и вопрос нюансов, может быть, это будет э, профессиональный, интересный э, специалист, э, и мы проведем там какие-то переговоры. А, опять же, этот будет шаг в любом случае инициирован правительством, потому что только они назначают руководителей э, в государственной организации культуры. Э, Значит, этот человек будет наделен властью и э, сформулировать мой статус в театре. Э, ну, все зависит от того, кто это будет и вообще, что за ситуация будет у нас в регионе, в стране. Может быть, у нас театры закроют все <laughs> через месяц. Мы не знаем. I have another question for the three of you, which is... Uh, in, in thinking these new models of these new ways or these new processes, uh, because they are sort of experimental models or we're trying to create new ways, how do we, how do we approach uh, funding or money issues? Because usually uh, money comes from like 
old school standards of uh, way, you know, like, so how do we, how do we find budgets for these new structures when usually people who put the money are reluctant to these experimentations uh, or to these new ways? So how do we find the funding for this, for these new processes or these new styles of leadership? Or have, how have you done it? Uh, it could be like an open reflection, more philosophical, or maybe like a more specific, like the way I've done it. Like I'm interested in knowing how do you navigate that? So just quickly to say that not everybody, in India at least, my experience has been that not everybody is averse to new ways of management because even within businesses, there are interesting new models that are coming up where there are collective spirits and in businesses as well. There are sort of cooperative models that people think of as well. Um, and there are business leaders who, if I may say, have a little bit part of, uh, of, of more collective socialist kind of ideas. And they may be running businesses, but at heart, they believe in the sort of more liberal left-leaning ideas of collectivism in a sense. So you have to find them. You're right that on the face of it, most of them may seem like old school, old, you know, old, old structures and faith in the tried and tested. But if you look at the kind of art they buy, so many of them are moving to digital art, new, new media art, and not the standard, you know, statues and paintings that they can hang on the wall. And those are the people you can have conversations with because they have already opened their mind to new things, new experiments in their own lives. So that has been one uh, good thing for us that we've been able to open conversations with those kinds of people. And where, what happens there is because organizations like ours, all three of us here are less in number, there are fewer people trying this. If you get to convince those people, they will come to you year, year after year. You have to, of course, perform and show them results that you're able to manage some of these experiments. The second thing is even the old school folks, are a bit tired of old school because many of them are realizing the fault lines. You can't hide behind old school anymore because the fault lines are becoming more and more uh, obvious for people to see. The abuse, the huge Me Too movement in the arts that happened in India recently has shown what abusive singular power that mostly heterosexual men have in this country in leadership of all kind, what it can do to society. And, and people are beginning to talk and realize that they have to fund other things. So that's a positive that people are speaking up across activism, across other sectors, and that's also influencing the arts and culture. And that's a very positive and good uh, effect, I think. Well, in our, in our case, uh, it has been as well a discovering, no? Um, the, the project began as a totally voluntary, project, voluntary project, and, and little by little, uh, some partners began to arrive to help us with the idea of changing those uh, patterns. No? And uh, now, uh, and since more than 10 years, we use the fluxonomy. The fluxonomy is a kind of uh, mix between futurism and uh, new economies, uh, creative economy, shared economy, collaborative economy, and multi-value economy. And, and for us, it's working very well. No, I have to say that we have formed as well an international uh, organization of different spaces working with that system. And, and uh, well, that opens as well a new world of multi and multi, uh, uh, also being part of a lot of different spheres at the same time. And in that sense, I think that we, when we were talking about orange economy or creative economy was a bit uh, limited because it was only one dimension, no? the dimension of the symbolic and creative ideas. But we have to mix with the social dimension, with the um, uh, material dimension of the spaces and, and the equipment, and as well with the uh, economic uh, and values dimension. In that sense, well, we are as well uh, experimenting mixing things, our small collectives as well are using this fluxonomy, which was uh, systematized by Lala de Henselin, um, um, 
a futurist of, of uh, Brazil. And for us, it's, it's working very well. And we are doing in that way. And, and for the moment, the money is arriving when, when we need it. Julia, and how's your case? Because if your your institution is a state institution, uh, which now has no leader, <laughs> so how do you <laughs> how do you work that from the from your position? Ну, как государственная институция, мы обязаны размещать на своем веб-сайте веб наш бюджет для всех открыто и зарплату, например, мою, руководителей, как бы и так далее за правила в своих проектах и в независимых опытах и в госинституции я взяла, что э, вся команда постановочная знает бюджет как бы полностью, он открыт. Э, невозможна ситуация, где э, есть метр, э, у которого гонорар отличается в разы от э, других участников проекта. Uh, глобальный это проект или маленький, uh, если это проект с хорошим бюджетом, um, значит, uh, ну, как бы все получают пропорциональные, пропорциональные гонорары. Uh, это может быть проект без бюджета, значит, мы все работаем бесплатно, я прежде всего. Uh, если uh, в бесконечных дискуссиях um, с художниками, да, когда мы понимаем, что не хватает uh, бюджета на продакшн, uh, говорим, ну, или мы отказываемся, мы обсуждаем эту, uh, эту ситуацию командой и принимаем решение, ну, окей, мы можем uh, отказаться от части гонораров uh, и закрыть таким образом дефицит бюджета. Um, но еще недавно, как бы, это была моей задачей как продюсера. Не хватает денег, ну, как бы, найди. Сейчас эта ответственность и финансовая тоже. Я вижу, как распределяется внутри команд разных. We're not gonna close yet, but we have to start going towards the closing. So uh, I'm gonna take a few of things that Fernando said that resonated to me as concepts. Uh, They, he said it in Spanish, but we're gonna find a way to translate them. Uh, he talked about uh, his work or the work in uh, Martadero as an action lab, Laboratorio de Acción. And also you said that uh, your role is to be un estratega de procesos de futuro, which I think it's very hard to translate, but sort of to be a strategist of process of future. So with that in mind, what kind of actions are you thinking for the future of your, of your projects? Well, uh, reflecting uh, uh, in the work we are doing, uh, and, and one of the main things, the core things of the uh, leadership today, I think is the communication. And is a, that's the communication of ideas, of resources, of people, of values, of uh, this consciousness of the moment when we are and where we are. And, and that's a main thing no, for our work as, as leaders and understanding that uh, every time more is a shared uh, leadership. No? Every one of us has to be leader in, a, in a, an aspect. No? But when we are working, working in a network of, of uh, leadership, is more powerful and this has to be a lot with communication i think in an old way of doing the things an old way to to use the power is uh, exactly not communicating no and then the communication for me is a core uh, aspect of our work so for us the really three things uh, one is that the idea that the funding must come from as many sources as possible. So we have over five to 600 individuals who donate in small amounts. So they don't have to be, you don't have to be rich to donate. And the idea that only people with large purses can uh, give money is, is again an old idea. You can have a large base of small monies that can make up uh, the money that you're spending. So we've been over the years and in the future as well as we go ahead, uh, going to increase this base so there will be Uh, corporate businesses, foundations and trusts as one, but individual donations will increase over the next few years in a huge way. So students 
So you can give as little as $10 to be a friend with, with our organization. So up to how much ever you want to give. So that's one. The second thing is going to be that decision making and will be more and more collaborative as in engaging peers in participatory sort of democratic processes of selection. We already do that, but want to do that more because this is, so it is almost like the strategy will build, be built at the bottom and it'll be like a bottoms up kind of thing where the trustees are told that this is, this is the strategy, this is where we want to go. And we don't get told by, by others. So it's going to be that. And the third thing is, uh, which uh, uh, Fernando, you spoke about in the inter, co, multi, and trans kind of ideas that you placed. I find that very, very exciting. I want to share that with my team because I believe that it's no longer a world where only artists and scholars can make a difference. It's artists, scholars, community workers, activists, people who are directly engaged in politics, political workers, workers of factories and other kinds of workspaces. So you need to find spaces where these kind of intersections can be found for artists. Artists have remained in like sort of separate spaces for just too long. So break the black boxes, break the, in, the art fairs, break the spaces where only artists congregate and mix it up. So, you know, in, in, in my part of India, you get a very interesting snack we call jhalmuri, which is basically a mix of different things. You put potatoes, you put some rice puffs, you put onions, you put chilies, and it's, a, it's like you put masala and it's a mixture. You also call it mixture. I think we need more mixture spaces. We need more jhalmuri, actually. Uh, and also, I think Fernando said something that's important, which is also this dialogue, which is the idea of networking and networks and creating bridges with, I mean, we're in different places, all of us, different time zones, and we're creating these dialogues that maybe could uh, invigorate our practice in the future. Sorry, Julia, you wanted to say something? Yeah, mm. yeah. Согласна с Арундати о более устойчивой модели финансирования. Я понимаю, что российское искусство максимально зависело от правительства, да, потому что имеет вот такую однонаправленную историю, за редким исключением. И, но ситуация с, и с частными пожертвованиями, и с небольшими донатами развивается. Мы видим сегодня, как вообще, мне кажется, ну, самый плохо защищенный, мало защищенный независимый э, сектор э, некоммерческих организаций, кому нужна помощь сегодня прежде всего, э, насколько люди э, откликаются сильнее, мне кажется, чем раньше, и наше общество меняется в этом смысле. Это про финансовую структуру, что я хотела сказать. И еще, мне кажется, что в самой ситуации лидерства, организации, институции, вот эта концепция одного лидера очень хрупка. Как бы, и мы видим это на, примере, на примерах вот коллег и на моем примере. Мне кажется, это не очень здорово и здорово, когда организация цепляется за одного человека, Мне кажется, ну, нам нужно взрослеть, и должен, ну, структура будущего для меня – это какая-то гребница, где нет единого центра принятия решений и ответственности. Я пока не очень представляю ее на практике, но я чувствую так. Perfect. So as a last question, and also thinking about sort of the end of the conversation, I'm, I have a question regarding sort of uh, Wolfram from uh, Green Room is putting it very interestingly with, he says, the idea of the art of disappearing, sort of. We have these positions of leadership right now, and we are experimenting with them, and we're experimenting with, with the people that work with us and the institutions that support us, or you in this case. But eventually, the three of you will leave your roles, which in the case of Julia, it's, it's, it's kind of happening. I mean, in a way it happened, in another way it hasn't. So how do you, in terms of leadership and finding like a new leadership, how do you make that art of disappearing from that role? 
would you be involved in the in the choosing of this next person or structure or will you take a stand outside how do you think i mean how do you project these ideas uh beyond yourselves as three individuals i don't know if i'm making clear my question like how how do we uh, we create this with these projects and this these new methods and how do we how do we exit so they can also be experimental to the next people that comes after us have you thought about that <laughs> but thinking that we're coming to the end of the conversation so sort of how will you eventually approach the end of your role or your that's, uh, that's something that uh, we are thinking of uh, in, in my organization right now because that's going to happen and yes um to directly answer your question yes i will have a role in uh, in the entire process so it's not just the decision making it's also the process by which you're going to open out the the call for the new leader and it needs to be public for example certain things like it needs to be public it needs to have both internal and external people ne need to be able to access that role and position who will be the team that will choose that must have people from the board and and others that entire process has to be thought through with the same values that the organization and the leadership are functioning with so transparent democratic diverse what are the kind of diversity parameters that you're going to keep in mind who are the different kinds of uh, stakeholders that the new leader will need to bring in because our in in all our leadership roles our jobs will end at a time where the larger job will still remain unfinished right so it's a process we may go somewhere else and do something else but this work will have to continue so that also to have someone who understands continuity and change what to change and what to keep that would be another very important decision for uh, the organization as such to to keep so the disappearing act like the leadership act is going to be a balancing dance of sorts it's always a dance <laughs> um in the in the line i was <laughs> commenting i think would be very um, interesting in the in these times of uncertainty <laughs> uh, as as was commenting uh, reso no about schrodinger leadership in these times that um, the things are changing so much and our our understanding of the things as well probably we have to reflect about co-leadership better multi-leadership inter-leadership and probably trans-leadership now what, what how we can push those limits and to understand the the uh, common responsibility about the processes because we are sometimes very badly educated no uh, that if there is a leader that that's the one responsible that's the one who has to do uh, several things as well in the governments no i guess in the governments is exactly like that because we are as uh, still having very pyramidal uh, structures no we have to be changing and moving our minds to new ways of organization julia i, I think in your case the act of disappearance it's even more uh i, I don't um, know it's even okay. more i don't want to say problematic because i don't think that's the way but it's going to be even more moved and uh, new so how, how are you thinking that i have one idea and i remember uh the joseph boys and uh his uh, words about the uh everybody is the artist and uh, i think that uh, it's a future for art uh, and uh, as this world, uh, we uh, cannot uh, depend from uh, artist personality and uh, from leadership leaders. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Uh, so with, with, that, with that idea of what's next in mind, uh, I want to thank the three of you for participating in this uh, conversation. At least for Fernando and me who are in Latin America, it's like 9 a.m. So it's very interesting to start our day with all these questions, you know, and uh, I think it's gonna, I, I'll be thinking about it all day, hopefully. Um, so I wanna also thank Ilia and Valeria who were helping us with the translation. Uh, so thank you, Julia. Thank you, Arundati. Thank you, Fernando. Uh, and I think this is just the starting point of more conversations regarding leadership and leadership styles and examples. So feel free to continue participating and sharing and discussing. Mm -hmm.